Ladies and gentlemen, it is a distinguished honor and a pleasure for me to welcome you here today for the opening day of the International Symposium on Cultural Diplomacy and Sustainable Developments. My name is Mark Donfried, the director and founder of the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. And I must say, first of all, it's an honor for me to be together with such distinguished guests. Uh, Dr. Subachai, we've had the honor and pleasure of meeting you already in Berlin. Uh, Mr. Yerksa, we very much look forward to your keynote address uh, in a few moments. Uh, your Excellency Ambassador Al Dufi, uh, Ambassador of Yemen, I'm very happy that you could be with us as well. Distinguished guests, uh, other distinguished speakers, uh, young leaders, uh, welcome to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. As I said, uh, I'm the director and founder of the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. And you may wonder, why is an Institute for Cultural Diplomacy doing a conference on sustainable development? Uh, this is in many ways a very innovative and I think pioneering effort uh, for us to expand the field of cultural diplomacy to really intersect more with sustainable development. Even though these two fields have been relatively separate in the past. Uh, we believe that the future is really a marriage be between the two. We think, in our opinion, there can be no sustainable developments without sincere and also um, successful cultural diplomacy. Uh, in the opposite direction, we would say there can be no successful long-term cultural diplomacy without also taking into account sustainable development uh, policies as well as strategies. Very briefly, uh, and then I want to give the word to our co-host, um, the cultural diplomacy for the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy is not just winning the hearts and minds of foreign audiences, such as it had been in the past. It's also not just the work of governments. Cultural diplomacy for us is really a partnership between the public sector, the private sector, and civil society with the goal of educating, enhancing, and sustaining relationships with the end goal of having a relationship being based on dialogue, understanding, and trust. So we don't need to agree with each other. We don't even need to like, like each other, although that would be better, but we do need to trust each other. And if we have that, then sustainable development can really flourish and stay long-term and vice versa. So just in terms of definitions, that's what the ICD is talking about when we discuss cultural diplomacy. How do we facilitate access to enable understanding and trust? And I'll tell you more about that when I have more of an opportunity later today and uh, during the week. Since we're under time pressure, I would like to give the word uh, to our co-host for this conference, to whom I'm very grateful. Uh, we've had a great collaboration in the preparation work, uh, Mr. Osvaldo uh, Agatello, who is a professor uh, of international economics and governance at the Geneva School of Diplomacy and International Relations. I'm really grateful to the Geneva School of Diplomacy for having helped us in terms of locations, in terms of speakers, in terms of content. This is the first time the ICD has ever done an event uh, in uh, Geneva. So in that sense, it was wonderful to have a local partner, and uh, we, we owe much of the success of this event to you. So if you could please give a warm welcome uh, to Professor Agatello. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, on behalf of the Geneva School of Diplomacy and International Relations, it's a great honor for us to collaborate with the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy in this extraordinary symposium that's going to have us work together for three days, uh, fruitful days. Uh, special welcome to the young values, the future of, of, of our work. Um, Please feel free to join us uh, in, in, in the debate in depth. We are located, this, we are in a in, in university institute located just a few blocks away uphill. So we'll be happy to receive you there too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I would now like to immediately introduce our first keynote speaker of the day and also our host for the day. Uh, and in doing so, just alert you to our scheduling challenge. Our two most important speakers of the conference uh, have the least amount of time. Uh, so I believe Mr. Yerksa needs to leave a few minutes before 11. Uh, so Dr. Supachai has kindly agreed to give us a welcome uh, to really you know, paint the picture in terms of also this connection, uh, sustainable development, culture diplomacy, in a brief sense. Uh, he gave an excellent keynote address on this topic uh, in Berlin, uh, to which we're very grateful. And then right after that, we will move to uh, Mr. Yerksa, who will give his keynote address, and I'm hoping we'll have time for some questions and discussion. Uh, we'll keep you here as long as we can. Uh, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Dr. Supachai uh, Panach Pakti has began his second four-year term as Secretary General of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development on September 1st, 2009, following his unanimous confirmation by the UN General Assembly. Originally from Bangkok, he received his master's degree in econometrics, development planning, and his PhD in the Economic Planning and Developments at the Netherlands School of Economics in Rotterdam. Dr. Subhajai began his professional career at the Bank of Thailand in 1974, working in a number of departments, including research and international finance. 
In 1986, Dr. Subutrai was elected to the Thai Parliament, appointed Deputy Minister of Finance, and then Director and Advisor, subsequently President, of the Thai Military Bank. In 1992, Dr. Subutrai was appointed Senator, and at the same year became Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand. In this role, he was actively involved in international trade policy and represented Thailand at the signing ceremony of Marrakesh and the Uruguay Round Agreement in 1994. He was also active in shaping a number of regional agreements, including APEC, ASEAN, and ASEM. Dr. Subutrai has also served as Director General of the World Trade Organization from September 2002 to August 2005. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a very, very sincere welcome for the Honorable Dr. Subutrai Panashpakti. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mark, for a length, lengthy description of my, my past. Uh, it, it's, it's been uh, quite, quite a mixed bag of blessings to have been working in, in several organizations. But out of all this uh, came my, my real conviction that uh, uh, what, what Mark just said to you in terms of uh, description of the cultural diplomacy, which is mainly to create coalition and partnership. Uh, among different segments of the population around the world with different uh, backgrounds, uh, cultural identities, uh, different opinions, that we can sit down and talk to each other and, and try to uh, uh, gain in terms of understanding what we are saying. I think this is something which is uh, uh, very convincing and what I always believed in. Uh, that's why I stray away from my work which used to be in the areas of banking, finance, trade uh, in, into this development and, uh, and trade areas. It is also so nice to be seeing some old friends again because uh, Mr. Yaksa here is an, is an is an very old friends and uh, I would say comrades in arm because uh, we've been operating together in the areas of trade negotiations at the World Trade Organization. Mr. Yaksa is one of the uh, one of the foremost uh, prominent uh, uh, trade negotiators and, and trade experts. Uh, not only uh, having worked with the World Trade Organization, but representing his own country, United States, as well. So uh, I'm very pleased to be seeing him. This is one excuse that I, I like to come and, and be with you all, uh, you all this morning. Also, I, I recognize he's still here, also from UNDP, and, and our colleague, uh, um, uh, Ambassador uh, from Yemen. Uh, these are all really very, very good friends to be here, and I, I'm sure uh, you can count on a very uh, informative and, and, and high high-level uh, discussion of the topic. Uh, I think I should leave uh, the, the, the real gist uh, of, of the substantive discussion to, uh, to my, uh, my friend here, uh, Rufus, because uh, he would bring uh, with him uh, more of the uh, up-to-date information on, on, uh, on uh, sustainable development and, and, and cultural diplomacy. Let, 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 let me say a few things, uh, uh, two things uh, uh, from, from the outset on why, uh, why we, we can put the two together of cultural diplomacy and, and sustainable development. When I was uh, last in, in Berlin uh, uh, to, to join the Institute of uh, Cultural Diplomacy in uh, the, uh, uh, one, of, one of the symposium, which was, that one was uh, on uh, building economic bridges, something like that, uh, economic bridges. And I thought it was so useful because, uh, and, and of course, uh, Mr. Yaksa can, can talk more about the need to build more bridges these days because we don't want the uh, process of multilateralism to be, to be waning, to be more diluted, uh, uh, to be less uh, uh, pronounced uh, uh, as, we used to, as we used to have the kind of uh, very, very uh, close uh, knitted uh, uh, international cooperation and multilateral cooperation. Uh, these days, if you look around the world, multilateral uh, negotiations and, uh, and rulemaking exercise are under a, lot of, uh, under a lot of pressure, not only at the World Trade Organization. With us in the UN, with UNFCCC uh, negotiating on the climate change policy, uh, with the work that we're doing uh, next week, and I will come back to this uh, at, at the, uh, the Rio Plus 20 meeting on sustainable development. Our own work at ANGTAD try to link all the factors of globalization together with trade and development. Uh, we don't go for negotiations for some, some new rules and regulations, but we go for some of the best practices, we go some of the best principles so that one can follow. One can follow in terms of having sustainable development being accepted and practiced 
and, and, and implemented by countries around the world. So I, I do believe that building bridges, as we were talking in Berlin in March, uh, it's been very useful. And you all who have been there, for some of you, uh, some of the former participants who have been there, I hope that they gain in terms of understanding how we can build bridges in different ways of application by applying the, uh, some of the toolkits of, uh, of cultural diplomacy. And now again today, uh, when, when I looked at the, uh, uh, the need for us to be uh, working towards the, uh, some sort of a guidelines or agreement, uh, in, in my humble opinion, uh, next week when we go to Rio de Janeiro to work on our Rio Plus 20, which is a, the, the third in a series of Rio conferences starting in 1992, 2002, and now 2012, every decade we have the Sustainable Development Conference. Uh, I look forward to at least having some agree guidelines on the principles that we would address the key issues of the goals for sustainable development, for green economy, for the common but differentiated responsibility principles, for some of the principles on climate financing, on transfer of technology, on so many issues. All these issues that I mentioned to you, sustainable development goals, you would have thought that we all know about this goal. No, I mean, uh, we all understand something. We think we understand something about sustain, sustainable development goals, which should cover the three pillars, economic, social, and environment pillars. So this is for sustainable development goals. But how are these goals going to be defined? How are they, how are they going to be defined? In, in, in what way? In terms of jobs, in terms of carbon footprints, in terms of... Uh, economic stability, poverty eradication. Now in New York, up until last week, negotiations on the final documents, the outcome document for Rio Plus 20 has been stalled. I was told that one fourth of the document uh, was already agreed upon and the rest now, they have started to work in Rio de Janeiro now. They are now in Rio, they started to work again to see whether the rest of the three fourths could be agreed upon. One key area of, uh, of how to reach sustainable development goals is the stepwise, like I said, sustainable development goals uh, uh, platform has three pillars, economic, social, and environment. How are we going to approach all this together? Is it environment first? Because when one discusses green economy, as advanced countries are proposing, particularly uh, countries in the areas of uh, European Union, Switzerland also do that, uh, when, when these countries propose to work on green economy as a, as, a, as, a tool, as a tool to achieve sustainable development, developing countries are talking about poverty eradication. And this is the kind of commitment that came from the first sustainable development in, at Rio 1992. That the priority should be first poverty eradication and then you can green the economy. That was agreement. Now, whether we can do both at the same time and also achieve social equality, this is a tall order. Now, if you can't eradicate poverty, then poor people will always uh, have to, to fall back on some of the dependence on energy sources that are not clean. For example, in Africa, you know that there are still millions of people in Africa that do not have access to electricity. Hundreds of millions of people in Africa do not have access to electricity, so they cannot cook, they cannot read, they cannot have communication. What they do with that cooking is that they cut down the tree and forest and denude the forest even more, deforest, and then burn, burn, burn the woods to cook food. So basic thing is actually to get electrification into all the areas in Africa, which is about development and poverty eradication. And it also will help, it also will help in greening the economy. So people are still uh, applying different uh, uh, kinds of arguments in discussing the goal for sustainable development. And uh, uh, this has not yet been uh, agreed in New York. They also uh, disagree on, on how to link green economy uh, with sustainable development. The European countries would like to see green economy as one of the tools. You see, when you talk about green economy, it doesn't mean you plant trees. Green economy is actually is defined as inclusive development that aims at growth plus equity. Growth plus equity, gender equity, 
growth plus, plus employment, growth plus inclusiveness, that all of them, all of us are included, including the youth, who are now so much unemployed around the world, and growth that means also that you do it with the so-called resource efficiency, that not growth at all costs. You leave things for the next generation because they also need growth. And resource efficiency is one of the key areas of the, of the greening of economy. There are uh, several uh, key factors underpinning the move towards sustainable development goals, green economy as a tool, and how to achieve all these goals. A few key areas, and I would wrap up, uh, a few key areas that, uh, that we do see in order to be able to achieve some of this goal, and it will be linked, of course, to cultural diplomacy. First is to have governments around the world to understand, and there have been several proposals that I have been uh, noting down, if I can uh, read some of them uh, uh, quickly to you. Uh, some of the proposals coming from G77 and China, for example, depicts that uh, there needs to be spatial attention to countries in spatial situation. We need to think of peoples in different situations, and some of them are in spatial situations. Some are very small, some are very vulnerable, some are landlocked, and, uh, and also they emphasize the need to be paying attention to disadvantaged and vulnerable people. We need to take into account different national realities, capacities, and development priorities. We need to con con continue to contribute to fulfill the right to development and achieving equity at all levels. And, and sustainable development goals should be voluntary in nature. So there should be no, no false solution, no conditionalities to, to be imposed upon poor countries. So these are some of the things that uh, are being asked, and I would say that cultural diplomacy maybe can help to pave the way for some of the understanding that we, we are all heterogeneous, but we, we, we need to have this convergence in the need to be reducing our carbon footprint around the world. That, that is something which is urgent. And why is it so urgent? Because times and again we have proven, we have been, it has been proven that natural capital, natural capital when damaged, is irreversible. You see, you can have physical capital, you can have financial capital, and they can be renewed. But natural capital, when used, when depleted, is irreversible. So this is, this is the urgency behind all this. And, and again, I would emphasize the need to build bridges to understand each other's problems so cultural diplomacy would help. Last key issues on uh, some of the things that uh, Ang Tat believes in. Uh, in our last quadrennial meeting, Angtat 13 conference, which we just concluded a few weeks ago in, in Doha, Qatar, it was our 13th conference in the 50 years of our, of our existence. Uh, we have a, a, a major conference every four years. Now, at this conference, we emphasize uh, what we call development-led globalization. Now, we think uh, development-led globalization rhymes well with sustainable development, with green economy, also with a kind of capacity building that could be couched in terms of some of the, uh, the forms of cultural diplomacy. We looked at development-led globalization through the lens to the eyes of inclusivity of people, of the poor parts of the world, of the marginalized people, of the women, of the youth, of the vulnerable people. We include in, in this uh, development-led globalization the human, the, the, the human development sides the social protection side, that while you are trying to liberalize the economies around the world and trade regimes, you have to look at the impacts on human beings, the jobs, the way they have to be retrained, the way that they have to be educated, the way that uh, their health could be protected. We want to have development-led globalization because we, we would like to see the world, the, 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 all the 193 members of the United Nations being included in global governance. We have praise and, 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 com and, and, and we commend the, uh, the efforts of G20. But we think the effort is not complete. We want all of us to be part of the new regime of global governance. And therefore, uh, 
uh, with you all understanding and discussing more and more how to spread the understanding of cultural diplomacy, we hope that you can create a new world, a better world in which we can keep on multiplying the participation of, of people, of countries from all around the world as much as possible. So we will have a chair solution, a real partnership for the, for the, for the uh, sake of uh, beneficial globalization for all of us. Thank you very much. Dr. Supachaya Panach Bhakti, thank you very, very much.